His Excellency Osman Sultan has addressed several conferences on telecommunications digital world across the Arab world, in Europe, and in the US, and we have had the distinct honor of hosting him as the keynote speaker of the AUS Business Forum a few years ago. I will not take up your time or his in making further introductions. I believe his own address will speak for itself. I would like you to please do two things. Remember to attend the lectures that are organized by Yassine Otmani on behalf of the Career Services Division of the American University of Sharjah. He spends quite a bit of time organizing those lectures for you so that you get to meet the likes of such distinguished leaders from industry. Otmani, where are you, Yassine? Yes. Would you please stand to be recognized? Could you please give him a round of applause? And the second thing I would like you to think of is the Office of Development and Alumni Affairs is here for you when you graduate, but it's never too soon to organize yourself for your graduation. The presence today with us of such a leading, leading business figure from industry, His Excellency Osman Sultan speaks volume about how respected the American University of Sharjah is and how important you as the young generation are to our distinguished business figures so that they take time in very, very busy schedules to come and address you on topic of interest. Please give a very warm welcome to His Excellency Asma. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And it's no words can describe how refreshing it is for me for two reasons to be here with you. One, because I'm talking in academia, and it's outside of the normal zoological territory in which I uh, address people, which is more in the business and uh, telecom community. And for the second reason, that the theme is the career development. And maybe something that I'm as proud as all what Dr. Murtada very kindly indicated uh, on, on, on my path, something that is not mentioned, but actually I should. 16 people that worked for me during this journey became CEOs of operations from Canada to Korea, Russia, Bangladesh, Algeria, Italy, Tunis, Egypt, Lebanon, and the GCC. So that is, if there is one tribute that I would claim more than these awards, because you never, is this fact that I contributed with uh, heart and mind in bringing people to something and, and, and contributing with all modesty and humility to their development. So having said that, I am tasked with a very uh, difficult task. I want to talk to you about something that you probably, in various aspects, you could teach me on. But my hope is to give you a different way of looking at a journey, of looking at a model. And the title of my presentation today is something that no need for words to convince you that it is fundamentally changing things that we are doing, is this entire digital space. I was recently in a dinner and of course, uh, some people started to mention to me all what's happening, started to mention to me numbers that they read about usage of YouTube, about things related and applications that are happening, that people making people doing things differently. And one of them said, it is almost scary. And true, because we see things changing completely. But what I would like to mention is that the world never stopped changing. When I was your age, the keywords were different. We were talking about keywords, manufacturing, processes, labor, land, all these keywords that mark the rise of the industrial era, industrial revolution. And then little by little, we started to uh, 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 hear word, keywords like uh, the knowledge society, brain power, innovation, etc. It doesn't mean that these didn't exist. It doesn't mean that today the old keywords are obsolete. It means that the shift has happened. And just let's open a parenthesis and consider what change is. Because change is not something that is 
unusual to you. It's not stranger to all of us. We are born, and then we just discover that we grow, and things change in our life, and we stop it. So change is evolution. But when change is rapid, we feel it as disturbance. When we are in a plane, and the pilot is saying, we are going in a zone of turbulence, this is because the height of the plane is moving probably a little bit faster than the normal glide path upwards or, or downwards. So we feel it. When change becomes disruptive, when we are doing things that we used to do and these things are disrupted, when uh, the earth uh, layers move too fast, that becomes a crisis. Be it unnatural uh, phenomena, earthquakes, tsunamis, etc. Be it on things in order of nature, in order spreading of viruses in a much faster way, these become crises and we live. Now, when we think how things change, of course, in the world of digital space that I'm talking about, it starts with new technologies. This is not important, and you will not, hearing, uh, you will not hear me uh, speak about two things today. One is technology, the second is do, as, as you mentioned, because I'm not here, of course, to, to uh, promote anything. I'm here to speak about the, the entire model. New technologies bring new capabilities, and that induce new behavior. Let me give you an example to see what we mean by new, new behavior. Think, doing things differently. When I was a kid in Beirut, and I started, you know, being 11 or 12, you start to be allowed moving, uh, going with your friends, uh, doing things. I had to look for a grocery store in order to find one of these phones, in order to make a call to my mom. That was the instruction to tell her, I arrived of this, I finished, I'm going home, etc. Our kids today, my kids who are younger, when they go to their friends, this is a different behavior. This is a different, just a change. And just imagine all the changes that are induced, not only with this example, but in our day-to-day -day life, individuals, in the day-to-day -day ways of doing things for corporations, government entities, even nations, if we consider what happened in 2011 in some neighboring countries in the Arab world where this digital capabilities changed simply history. So things are there. New behaviors are bringing new business players. Because certain things, the refreshing thing is that this is constantly changing. We did not, today, one of the, uh, uh, one of the players that you hear about, Facebook, six years, seven years ago, I'm sure that no one heard about it. Twitter even. While Companies in telecommunication that had years and years of history are becoming for a lot of you and specifically for younger generations unknown where these were main names. So new players, it is inducing new business models that are changing uh, things and we will talk about it. I like to call it new flows, tadafukat. And if we think everything is around these flows. This country, in the last decades, the last two or three decades, have managed precisely to become at the heart of various flows. Flows of goods and merchandise, flows of people, flows of capital and investment, and flows of ideas, innovation. And this has created this entire momentum. Are we witnessing a new forms of civilizations, I strongly believe so, and I would leave it to you as a question to see at the end of my presentation. Now, in order to see how this change is, I picked a video from YouTube. No. Sorry. Can we have the... Uh, I picked a video from YouTube. I want... I leave it with you. It's there. I leave it with this.
She's pressing, she's pressing where the button on an iPad is. <laughs> if we see. Steve Jobs has coded a part of their operating system. This is the depth of the transformation we are witnessing. Because, and I realize how young you are, but I can tell you, you are still not what we call the internet natives. People who, as long as, as, as far as they can remember, never knew a world without this connectivity. You have known a world without connectivity. Probably, when I see your age, not without, you know, a mobile phone, or at least when you started to be, uh, as, as, as far as you can remember, you remember this part with a mobile phone. We do remember a life with mobile phone. We don't know how we used to manage. But we, we had this. So imagine the complete different thinking of people who were born natives at the age of the internet and who always knew and had this connectivity. To illustrate what is happening, I want to give you some numbers. What happens in one internet minute? And before going in these numbers, I just want to have a prospective view and to take you, once I find how we can have a, I think this, yeah. Here, for those of you who can't read, in 2015, it would take five years to view all the video crossing the internet networks each second. If we take the video that is passing on all the internet uh, network in one second, if you want to watch it back to back, it will take you five years. So imagine the type, and this is 2015, this is tomorrow. We're not talking in, in 20 years. This is for you. Tomorrow you will be starting in the uh, life and profession. So imagine the type of infrastructure and imagine the type of word, of application that this is. I found this extremely exciting. Today, and by the way, this is the most difficult slide ever because the moment you print it, it's already obsolete. Not the moment I, I bring it to present it to you. The moment it goes out of the printer, it's already an obsolete uh, numbers. Uh, today you have every minute 204 million emails that are circulating on the internet. Not to mention what's happened on Facebook, on Twitter, on the music downloads. You have, in terms of Apple applications, uh, you have uh, 1.3 million video views every minute. You have, uh, where is the apps, 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 somewhere, sorry. One, two, app download, okay. Give me the number. 40, uh, yes. Every minute, 47,000 apps that are downloaded. So this is the world of the internet. Now what I would like is that for this, for you, not to have this still be a kind of um, vague thing. I want to take you through the model, the construction that is bringing this, not from a technical point of view of what's happening. We said that there is change, but I'd like to claim that it has been the simple story that is probably as old as civilization. We need to stick that certain things are happening with the same principles. This is why you had transport. Transport, consider rivers, sea, roads in the, between the, the mountains and the valleys. And it is not a coincidence that civilizations, cities, have been created and developed 
around the natural ways of communication that mankind has. Why do we speak about civilization along a river? Why do we speak about civilization happening uh, on the shores of the, the Mediterranean Sea civilization or the, uh, that, that happened on the uh, Arabic Gulf or the etc. etc. Because there was ways for people to communicate. There was ways to build ships and move to transport things. Imagine this picture that we all see. Uh, mankind cut trees. Trees are taken on rivers, transported on rivers, just without anything. And then they arrive to be treated in factories and to become whatever things. So a transport, on this transport, you have a content. And this content brings an experience and lifestyle. Wood from a tree becomes chairs, tables, whatever uh, 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 instruments that are used. And you will see that this equation with its simplicity is building the entire model. Let me take you, let us look at this from a different point of view. Let's look at these components. The content first, instead of transporting wood or merchandise, the content that is transported are movies, are magazines, text, voice, interaction, people dealing with each other. It's transported through these pipeline. On the content side, you will see the players that are publishing houses, music, cinema, press, and their dynamic is a dynamic of production. They think production, how I will produce this movie, how I'll produce this music, etc. Then you will see the telecom player coming into play. These are the telecom operator, the TV and cable network, the broadband network, and their logic is a logic of giving access, broadcasting, a distribution. How can I distribute this access? And at the end, on the tap side, all the world of devices that is changing. That is the model. Now there is someone, something is missing in this model. And this thing has been missing constantly during years, except recently has come to the equation with a lot of power. And these are you, users. For years, be it telecom companies, be it the production companies, etc., they were users and they didn't have a say except by liking or not liking a movie, buying or not buying. But they were not part of this entire channeling equation. Today, this part here is driving the entire. And users are driven by a logic of benefit and value. What's in it for me? So we started to see little by little this model articulated around content aggregation. And you will see a lot of, of this happening, people aggregating this content you, from the time where a singer is singing a song or somebody is producing or writing a book to having it becoming a digital uh, object. And more importantly, the three screens. And I put the three screens and more because all of you in your lives, you have three screens that are constantly there. The mobile, laptop or pad, and the TV. And we used to think of these separately. These are becoming just one. And what's happening is we are moving from a world, and believe me, I worked since 1983 in one of the largest groups in telecom, the fourth largest telecom group. And we used to not share anything. We had, I was here. Actually, I was in that part because I started as a, something that was an experiment on the content aggregation in one of these groups. And I was concerned that every day the group will find out that I'm not in the core business and they will cut this activity and we will all be fired. So, because, but telecom never used to share with other parts. The content people, the press, had their own certainty, and they don't share. We know what we have to do. The music industry, the TV industry. So we were in the world of unshared certainties. 
Now we are moving to a world where forced, mujbaran akhakala batalan, they are forced to share. That's the good news. The bad news is we are sharing uncertainties because no one knows how the model is evolving. So it's a give and take equation. Now let's look at this. There is one word that you al always heard in this industry, conversions. And let's take this user here at the middle and see conversion starts at the level of your device that you're you are doing things that probably you used to do on your TV. As I said, you're still, you're very young, but not young enough to have known all these screens becoming one. There were things that you use until now, probably things that you do on your TV and only on your TV. But now more and more, we can do these things on the laptop, the pad, the tablet, or even on the mobile phone. We started doing things on the mobile phone that I used to do only on my, on my uh, laptop. Now my email most of the time is on the device I'm handling. So we started to see this world around me, around the user, converging at the level of the device. But then at the level of the content, the content now is flowing. There is not something that I can do only on you know, the voice content. It all become one, the multimedia content. On my laptop, I have the, 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 I have the video content. I have, as well, at the level, and this is the most important, at the level of my environment. I am doing things that I used to do only in my office or things that I used to do only at home. When I'm watching, now I am on my way to go somewhere for a business meeting. I can watch a TV emission, a TV show. This is thing I used to do only at home. So this is the major thing is that there are no more borders when we share that these borders between different industry players. This is completely, this is of course completely linked to you. On a more distance, at the level of the technology, things are conversion. This is something that you cannot feel because you're not in this. But now there is no more difference from a technology point of view between a fixed network a mobile network, uh, even the broadcasting, the IP protocol is everywhere. The IP is everywhere. And by consequence, conversions is happening at the level of the industry players. Hardware and software, fixed net, telecom, publishers, all this IT, media, IT and media, uh, all this, all these are becoming almost the same. Now, I want to take you through again to see who, who did hear about cloud. <coughs> All of you. Who knows what is the cloud? Somebody knows. Can I? Who knows what is the cloud? Exactly. Everything, actually, everything can be a cloud. What is cloud except, you know, as you said, a place of storing things that you can then access instead of storing it on the... So you know that. But what is happening, the world now, this equation that we have seen, this, you know, the content, the pipeline, the tap, is changing to another equation. These are the customers. And as you see, they are partying, they're happy customers because they have all this digital space. This was the equation, devices, they use device. Devices go through operators, be it broadcasting operators, I put MBC, I put Tisalat, do whatever. Infrastructure, and that is fixed mobile broadcasting, that's the world of operators. On the other hand, and completely separately, you had the world of content, and then who can tell me who is the number one provider of content? YouTube. YouTube. We saw it. How many content YouTube produces? Zero. You produce the content on YouTube. So the main contributor is coming from here. User-generated content. The change that is happening 
everyone is becoming a broadcasting. Everyone is becoming a publisher. YouTube, the number one content provider, is, doesn't, is not even in the content production. This is what I want to make you be aware, be aware of. Apple transformed the entire borders of the music industry that is more than 100 years. Some people tell you yes, because they invented the iPod. It's not the iPod. They used to be MP3 players. Apple changed and disrupted the entire borders of the music industries because of the iTunes business model. It is not a technical invention. It is just a new business model that they invented. And they disrupted an industry that is 100 years organized the industry of the uh, initially it used to be, you know, the big uh, 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 discs, uh, long play disc, and then the cassettes, and etc., or the video, etc. All this has been disrupted because of a business model. There is not any innovation in Facebook. Facebook disrupted even things at the level of the entire globally, but there is not any technical innovation. It is just an innovation of a business model. That is where I'm saying all of you could be creators, inventors, innovators just by. It is not about being engineers or being in the technical field. This is what I was saying in my first slide. There is a need. People think of a way of doing things differently on a need, and that becomes a successful business model. So what we are seeing now, this virtual space, the world that the answer was absolutely accurate. It's a virtual. This is this virtual space that is now between the universe of content and between. And what I see happening are two things. What is driving this is the design. Design. Because the revolution that the iPhone made or the, was because an interface. They this intuitiveness just by being able to move things, revolutionize things. That was a technical innovation. That was well packaged as well. It's a de design. And the second thing that will determine is data, the flow of data. Now, on data, I want, there is now something, and I don't want to go into too much details, all this ecosystem somebody has to pay for it can somebody tell me how is youtube how is google or youtube making their money these companies that are investing so much so how are they making their money advertising so what is the commodity that they are selling when they ad for advertising what space you you again we ask a question. The answer is again, you. They are selling to advertisers. They are selling to the Coke of this world and Nike of this world. I have 50 million users. So if you go there, you can reach 50 million users. The question more and more, the model is shifting. And now, instead of having viewers, advertisers are saying, yes, but it's like having a billboard on Sheikh Zayed advertising for a Rolls Royce. How many people passing under, uh, passing under this bridge and seeing this are the target audience? So I need relevance. So the good news for you, you will become a more and more important component in this equation because advertisers, us, everyone need to be more relevant to you. Because they will need you, once you see this, to click on the ad. Because they will be paid not only by viewers that see the page. I, I, I would sit in front of a page and probably see an ad related to, uh, I don't know, uh, washing soap. I will not click on that. That's not my, so I will not be, it will not be relevant to me. So the business models, just to say to you, business models are changing. Because let me tell you something. So far, nobody knows who will be paying 
for, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, technology is not really my, I'm an engineer by accident, by the way, as Dr. Murtada mentioned, I graduated as an engineer, never worked uh, as an engineer. It doesn't mean that I don't enjoy that. I mean, because there are engineers here, so they will feel, oh my God, why, is there something wrong in what I'm doing? No, this is a great thing, and all this is possible through engineers, but it just happened that my character, my temperament, I never worked, uh, I, I, this is why I say I'm an engineer by accident. That infrastructure, that is the big debate. Are you interested to tell you a little bit the story between the telecom and the players like Google, etc.? You're interested. We at, in the telecom business, traditionally what we do, we build roads. And what we transport in this road used to be for years, the voice, because you speak, we take it, we put it in a bus or in a car, and we take this voice to your friend. You know, uh, Dr. Murtada will call someone, her voice will be transported. And the equation, life was very simple. Telecom charged two things, used to charge two things, time and distance. I'm sure that you remember, if you stay more on the phone, you pay more because it's a minute, a second, whatever. And distance, because if you call a longer destination, uh, you, would, you would pay more. And this is probably why in the old Arabic movies, Egyptian movies, when somebody was calling his son or daughter abroad, you know, from a booth, they would shout, hello, hello, because, you know, they needed to make sure that the voice is going far. So probably that, that is... That is the story, very touching. Now what happened, we carry people, not the voice anymore for instance, on these roads there is a big shopping mall that Mr. Google or Mr. YouTube or Mr. Facebook or, or Mrs. Facebook, I don't know, I, please, no, no gender, constructed. And people go there and they start doing things in this mall. They see ads, and Google get paid on the ad, fine. And Asman. telecom operators don't get any As money. Asman, I'm bad as not. Please, I will ask you, I know you're enjoying the lecture, and I know what's happening. You are actually sharing with your next door neighbor, which means the person seated at the seat next to you, your latest thoughts about your latest phone and your latest media, uh, Apple application, and this, the things that we, at age 42, we are, uh, is obsolete to us, and we are obsolete to them. We have an extremely distinguished guest, and I know before we finished introducing him, no, you applauded. I'm giving him time to grab his water, and I'm giving you time to pause, please. It will be another 30 minutes. It's a very engaging lecture. I know you're engaged by it, and it is testified to by the fact that you're talking no, to one another, but please let us focus, and I promise you, uh, Osman Sultan will be addressing will be. your questions, and we will have ample time to talk to one another and to him as soon as he finishes. Thank you, please. Thank you, doctor, but I think, no, they're much more. Uh, so, we take these people, they reach the small, and they do things. They buy things, etc. We don't, telcos don't get any filth from that, fine. The issue, that is happening is that people were going out from these shopping malls with bigger and bigger things, videos, large videos, film to download. And they were at, they asked the telco operators, now I need a bigger bus to transport me to where I am. So you built bigger buses, but then the road is not big enough. Then you need to make the road bigger. This is 2G. 3G, 4G, LT, what? I don't want to go into technicalities, but in using a metaphor, roads have to be larger and larger. And I'm not getting one fills from the things that are happening on this space. So a big debate now is happening between the telecom operators and all over the world, not only here, between telecom operators and between the uh, over-the-top players, the Google of this world, the YouTube, the Facebook, saying, guys, who is going to pay 
for this infrastructure. Because back to my one of my first slides, if there will be in 2015 video in the amount of you need five years to watch one second of video, believe me, the infrastructure we have today will not handle it. Now, to get to the societal part, as we say, I was sitting on a panel in the International Telecommunication Union recently, and the senior government official in Japan just said, I want to share with you something. In the recent tsunami, we were blocked of delivering or channeling relief emergency services for the people because the telecommunication that is needed was completely jammed by people who were uploading what they were, and who can blame them? They are in such situation, people are uploading and sending to their families and friends uh, videos on YouTube, and the entire network was jammed. So there are, are well a lot of thinking. Should there be different layers for different users, etc.? You need to be, because you will be confronted every day when you will go and buy your telecom services, etc., when you will be proposed certain things, just think this is the overall equation. This is why. Now, moving from that, this thing that you use every day, the internet, I like to call it the construction of the abundance model. And the question, are we trading depths versus breadth? Let me explain what I mean. It started with the information highway project, mid-90s. I was very fortunate that I was, because of a very specific job that I was doing for a telco operator in that. And I moved in 94 to the US to start this thing on the internet. This was not, the net was not, we, we used to call it the web. So, and uh, this is why in 96, when I got this award for a website, it was really something, I was, it was out of the box. And what happened from 90, the, the companies that you heard about from 95 until the main companies, their names were Google, search engine, the Yahoo of this world, etc. That was the phase where you put more knowledge and on this reservoir. In 2000, let me phrase the first one here. I, I used to say we go to the inter we used to go to the internet like we go to a library. We want a book, we want an article, and we bring it. Probably a phase that you will not remember. Probably a phase that you will not remember. Now, in the 2000s, once this marketplace started, and for a parenthesis, how do marketplace start in the ancient time? Somebody has something he wants to trade because he has eggs and vegetable and he needs some, somebody else because he's, he's a farmer. He goes someplace and people, all of a sudden, places become where people go and trade things. And then little by little, one guy discovers that, oh, there is a lot of people passing, there is food for on this place. So he, he had this thing, he puts a kiosk and starts selling things and sandwiches and etc. And these are, and then all of a sudden, this place becomes, etc., and the big mall is constructed. This is what I call the abundance model. So the second phase, we started to go to the internet, started in 2000. This is where uh, you, we see the, the rise of the Amazons, etc., of this world. A little bit earlier, because it started like you go, but once they, you could do a transactional model, then you would able to go to the internet like you go to a shop. We started to buy airline tickets online, pay for this online. That's what I call the transactional phase. And the real revolution that happened in starting earlier, but let's say the rise of it earlier, Facebook, is the networking part, social networking, that was really the tsunami. And here I have to make a statement of humility. The social networking was not invented by the telcos or by the IT people or by all the big players. It just happened. It just happened because someone wanted to do something 
never had the idea that this will become like this one. I'm sure, and you saw the movie, when Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, he didn't plan and say, I'm going to have a network that is going to have more than a billion uh, people on it. it. It just started and was built. And guess what? Another statement of humility. When the mobile was created, every, the experts in the uh, telecom companies did not plan that this is going, mobility is going to change the world. When I was in charge of bidding, I was heading the bid for a mobile license in a country like Egypt, 80 million people. The experts in business planning, the experts in the financial thing, put a business plan shooting for what we call 8% penetration. Penetration is how many people are using mobile divided by the, which means that after 10 years, because it's a 10 year business plan, the plan was to have something like 6 million users of mobile in Egypt. And when I wanted to have a different business ambition and I insisted to have, and this is still on the box that I myself put as an answer to the bid before the time that was, and I wrote on it, Al Mahmoul fi Yad al Jamia. In Egypt, mobile is Al Mahmoul, in other countries, Al Mutaharrik, Al Khilya, Al Jawal, etc. You know, the Arab world has a tendency not to uh, wanting to agree even on one word, Ta'addadat al Asma. So even for that, I mean, we are completely in, in, in line. So it, I said Al Mahmoul fi Yad al Jamia because I strongly believe that mobility will be this thing. Today, you have more mobiles, or at the end of this year, you will have more mobile than you have people on the planet. In 2015, you will have two times mobile devices than you have people on the planet. So imagine the acceleration. I want to leave you with this. And this happened. Now I want to leave you with a bigger thought. Today, if a Maasai farmer in a remote area in Africa has a very simple mobile phone, not any capability, this farmer has more communication capabilities than President Reagan 25 years ago when he was the president of the first power on earth. And if by chance the same Maasai farmer in a remote area anywhere, somewhere in, in Africa has a smartphone, he has access to more knowledge than President Clinton when he was 15 years ago, when he was president of the most uh, powerful nation on earth. So I want to leave you with the thought of the empowerment that this is creating. If we stop there without looking at the implications for you, how this, I'm personally convinced that this is fundamentally going to transform everything we do, I would have done nothing in my interaction with you. So here, I want to take you through, as I said, in 97, I came with this slogan, a mobile in the hand of everyone, al-mahmoul fi al jamia when coming to the UAE, when I had this immense privilege of being called by the founders of Do to say, we want you to set this, of course, the Mahmoul Fiyad al Jamia was nothing in 2005 when we started working on that, would have been completely irrelevant. In a country where Mahmoul was already Fiyad al Jamia, and probably one in the other hand and one in the pocket, if we. So this is so. Then I, the thinking is, we need to take it to the next level. The next level being, you're not only thrilled because you will be able to communicate when you are on the move. You will be thrilled and this will change your life because you will carry with you everything. You will carry your college, your university, the bank, the shop, the supermarket. You will carry with you your bunch of friends, you will carry with you your entertainment, your music, and this is what's happening. And this gave birth to the Add Life to Life slogan that I'm really very proud of, but more than this, in the, uh, 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 when I was, at the time, I was chairing 
the ITU working group for the Arab world. And I said, I believe that being connected is becoming a basic human need. I said basic human need. And I had people saying, come on, from different countries, in our countries, in the Arab world, we don't have this situation. You cannot generalize. We still have basic human needs like access to decent health care, access to decent education that are not. How can you talk about that? In 2011, I said in front of, you know, within one of the groups, I believe that this connect, being connected, access to being connected is now not anymore a basic human read. It, a basic human need, it is becoming a basic human right, which we are seeing now more and more in different countries because of how much this enables economic development, creativity, creation of jobs, etc. So I have to ask you to consider always that everything will become digital. Now we speak about digital like it's you know separated, but everything that we touch is becoming digital. The second thing is our universe is in constant transformation, more profound than we believe, regardless of any value, opinion or of value. One example, you know that little kids ask always, they nag and asking questions. What is the longest river in this continent? Or you know this question where your kid come, you probably don't know the answer, you want to. So this happened, my kid was seven here, and he was asking his mom, okay, what is this? And she, you know, and she was doing something else, so she, and when she started to be a little bit, you know, uh, uh, okay, I will tell you, don't nag on me, etc. He all of a sudden has this revelation, and I was there, and I listened, but why I'm asking you, you know, like, is I will just Google it. Okay, that is not something that you, will, you, you all, all, all know that, seven years old. But when you think of that, what does this mean? That means that all the schematic of learning are going to be transformed. And related to this, because how do we build the schemes of authority? Schemes of authority are, we give authority because we don't know, because we get the knowledge. We give authority to our parents first, because this is our first access to knowledge, then to the, uh, then to the teacher at school, then to the professor at university, then to a mentor in, in the work, etc., etc. And this is now being articulated differently. We are, for the first time in history of humanity, younger generations know more than older generations. This is the age we are. YouTube. And back to the slide that I was, two slides ago that I was showing, back to this question, are we trading depth versus breadth? Let me explain what I mean. Google, you go there, you go in a subject completely. In the social networks, which is probably most of your access to information in addition to which is constantly the day-to-day -day access, you are trading because you is, it is not the search of what a newspaper talk, it's what my friend. So the abundance model as well, and this is a cycle, the abundance model that I'm talking about is as well transforming. One question, how many TV channels on average do you have access to? in your homes or what? Access to 500. With do, you can have access probably to 600 or, and if you're at the Salat, a little bit less, but that's, I'm not here. I'm not here to, I'm not here to, to, to say anything. So and it basically, okay, give and take, hundreds. Another question, how many of these do you watch regularly? Five, six, seven? What, the same thing is happening on the access to info. Probably now people are having access to their info through a group of friends that they determine because the abundance model is so vast that we do not have time to go. So we look, 
I have seen somebody send me something on people who I'm um, following tweeted two or a couple of things, and that's my ID. I leave you with the thought how dangerous this could be in being an imbricated network. If the world is going in this mesh organization, some rules will happen. And this is the slide that I like to, after this, we need to think that there is one of the thoughts, for instance, one of the thoughts. I was participating in uh, an Arab uh, ICT organization conference, and the idea that was thrown is how can we educate, because the mother now, a lot of mothers in the Arab world do not understand or do not have an idea of what their child is accessing, what is behind this door that this child is accessing, because there is lack of basic awareness that is given. And with all the risks that could happen. So these are societal issues that are now raised in education, in ensuring that you can protect, etc. We all heard about things related to, you know, to dangers for children on the internet. We all heard. So there need to be, we need to demystify and humanize technology. And most, we need to establish all the corporation as a social citizen. And again, like what is happening, development, if development is not shared enough with everyone, you get crisis. It happened in the world, we saw. It happened in a lot of countries in what we saw in 2011. The governance of this digital space is fundamental. We have to ensure fair access, fair practices. Otherwise, the divide between connected and not connected will become more and more important. And I'm coming to what's happening in this part of the world at some point, because that is a subject very dear to my heart. And now, we need to ensure that people believe that digital and companies, for instance, in, in do. People think that, oh, being digital, the CEO will just say, OK, let's have a Facebook page. Let's have a, a, a Twitter presence. No. Digital is changing everything we do. The new structures. You will be working in companies where the organization, where your role, where your own organization structure in which you will say, oh, what's my title? Where do I fit? Is completely different than the companies that we started working in. Because we will see companies becoming more and more delayered. Companies, instead of designing, I, I, I come from the world where it is everything was done by intelligent design. Now, more and more, because you are having the upper hand, you will see that this is a cursor between the intelligent design and what I call the iterative adaptation. It's a new way where things are done. It's a new way in going retail. I was listening. We brought a speaker that was saying, we brought a speaker that was saying, there are two girls in the US. They created a YouTube channel, and they started to just what they buy. They do their shopping, clothes, and accessories. And they were uh, doing this on the YouTube channel. These two girls had more digital transactions on this channel than the 800 banks in the US accumulated. And you're telling me that the world is not profoundly changing. That is what I want you to. If I did something and you go out and say, yes, we are going in, uh, to live in a world that is changing and there are plenty of opportunities, then I would consider that uh, uh, we, we achieve the target. Now, how this is an innovation. What I just mentioned is an innovation. Innovation happens either by necessity. You know, we say the mother, necessity is the mother of all invention. You need. You have to, you know, when primitive men, they have to go somewhere to bring water. So they have to invent something because, you know, it's just going there and drinking the water. They invented a bucket. 
that's as simple. This is necessity. Then we started to build systems where the innovation is by exploration. This is what you do in universities. You create a framework, you have R&D, etc. you try to explore. But again, the example of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, innovation by serendipity, which is outcome from accidental discovery, things that are done and that people are using for a different purpose. And that is great. Now, very quickly, I'm going, because this is more related to the industry we are in. Yes? OK, so this part, I don't think. Moving from vertical to enablers, this is more of a, let me take it away. The ICT as enabler, OK. Now we have done that. Again, I want to take, to illustrate this, I want to take a video on YouTube. Nothing to do with Do or any company. This is a glass company, and I'll let you see how they imagine. Vis-a-vis -vis industry players, vis-a-vis -vis you, yourself, that we should not miss the digital age, because this is our opportunity. We will not be able to catch up on all these factories and R&D. So we have to catch up within the history through this digital age. We cannot miss it. And I want to end with an act of faith that the new digital age will contribute in this region because G D Generation Digital Arabia is you. It's out there. And Yahoo is saying there is a new master of the digital universe. At do we like to call it, I like to call it, the new universe. Having said that, we have to do it with great ambition, but with a lot of humility, because our kids will be showing us the road. And I can only finish by thanking you a lot for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Fadi Alul, who has uh, very kindly coordinated this lecture, I wish to tell you, for those of you who are engineers, you can see in uh, His Excellency Uthman Sultan a living example of someone who begins as an engineer and has a world of opportunities. He has indeed brought life to life. In Arabic, Uthman Sultan is not a man from your words. Of course, you know, our students have uh, commitments and they worry about their ne next classes. Those of you who can remain, who do not have classes or exams, back to back with this lecture, could address just a few questions to uh, His Excellency Uthman Sultan. Um, I, uh, thank you for I being, thank, you, thank you for coming. Any questions? IPv6 is being worked, and I don't have an exact date, but this is absolutely on the agenda, Yani. Very good question. Yes, Excuse please. me, sir. Now that uh, telecommunication is becoming very integrated in our life, do you think that in the future, uh, activities that were done only in real life, like marriage or protests, will become also integrated? I have seen uh, a concert in Japan. And we saw crowd and people with these lights and doing and shouting. And then the star, it was not Beyonce or Jennifer Lopez or any of these. It was a virtual person, very famous in Japan, that is this virtual star. Do we believe this is good, that we move into only a virtual? I personally don't, but I don't have a say. None of us have a say. I believe that if we forget the ultimate format, one day a journalist asked me, what do you consider the ultimate format of communication? And believe it or not, as a, a telecom operator guy, I said, if we forget the beauty when Ahmad Shawki used to say, then we will be losing our humanity. And I strongly believe in this. Thank you. Marriage. Yes, you took the example. This is one among the most, you know, structuring things in the life of societies. We need to keep reason. We are not slaves of technology. Technology has to be used to embetter the world. And ethics, as Osman Sultan reminded us. Yes, please. Which type of engineers did you used to be? And when did you realize that you, you're not good for engineering? No, no, I didn't say I'm not good for engineering. 
لا 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 اي طلعت لطلع نينا الصيت انه اي واز كومبليتلي نو اي اي ام ماتيريال اند ميكانيكال انجينير نوت ايفن تيليكوم نوت ايفن ان ذا اي تي سبيس ذس واي اي ساي باي اكسيدنت بات اي ريلايز ذات اي 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 ميد ان اند اوف end of study project and it was very technical and i was not enjoying it i was not enjoying it was it was very interesting challenge but i said no i like to you know if don't forget in anything you do in your profession it is all about people it will remain all about people so that's uh, keep it in mind we'll take one la okay two last questions one question there you had a question yourself why don't you ask yes We're standing between uh, our guests and their lunch, and I know that. No, no, I enjoy this. We want, to, we want to make it more interactive. Uh, Mr. Sultan, where does security play in all of this? I mean, uh, people are creating their universe. What about, like, you know, in some cases, what about freedom of speech? And then telecoms can. No, this is what I mentioned without going in detail in two things. regulating this and the second thing is what you call the security because you know whenever you have any invention you have misuse of this invention anything not necessarily in the digital space and then people invent the antidote this is what's happening now you invent a new software and then you have people who just you know come and bring a solution this is why i there is one slide but i skipped this where i was cyber security the world is going to be organized by enablers and each of these enablers will have its own regulation because this has to be you know constraint societies define themselves on us by the constraint if you have a street and you have only two cars in the street you will not see signs manu al murur and don't pass etc when you start to have 2000 cars you will see signs go only here red light etc So the more you will have traffic in my opinion as we saw the more you will need regulation it's like but infrastructure in my opinion will become a utility like roads like electricity because that will be a fundamental part of things that are done in society any other questions yes yeah, there is one uh, good afternoon sir sir my question is not at all related to the presentation that you is but uh, the thing is like was it difficult for do to enter uh, Oh, it is lot was already a tough competitor you know monopoly that i can speak hours but <laughs> they, we i don't think your colleagues have hours yes it was very difficult because three things happened that were completely unique one never in the world the second player entered in a market that was so penetrated because it happened late never usually this other guy have between 5 10% the market is 5 10% we entered in the market with more than 100% two If you look at all the startups in telecom in this part of the world they were all built with an existing incumbent operator mobile in Saudi uh, uh, Mobinil and Vodafone in Egypt Jazi in Algeria Nauras in Oman etc Viva in Bahrain etc all of them had either Etisalat Qtel etc do was the only one we had, we did it with our own resources and that that was the willingness of the owners of this company to say we can show that you can do it and that was why i felt very privileged but it was a huge responsibility you go through this experience is one of the most enriching in life after of course having kids and i'm blessed i have five kids so i don't i want to keep as well the balance between what is essential and but that's a very enriching but it was really very tough but alhamdulillah we are here and today we we look at that with a lot of passion mustafa who here present was one of the guys who were with us since the very early days as a direct report of sultan osman is currently as the vice president of the by world and we are privileged to have you with us as well any further question yes young lady yeah hello sir uh mashallah you have such a nice career i'm sure due to that you have a really wide perception i want to know if uh, if you have that one innovative business plan in your mind that you think nothing can exceed that the limit of progress in technology do you have anything in mind wow well first of all i always now probably because you know you're not building a cv anymore 
I always say, what is progress? Is it about uh, GDP increase or is it about well-being of people? And actually, I believe that this is a debate that will exist more and more in the world we are living in. The last economic crisis and the way things, we will look more and more and what's happening as turmoil in the Arab world generally is showing us that we need to focus on the, on the main things. But do I have, no, I don't have this one thing, uh, uh, business plan that will think the innovative thing. And if I had, the last thing I think is share it with everybody so they go and do it while I'm still working with do. If I had this, I run, do it, and try to, to do something there. No, no, I would gladly do it, but I don't have it. Osman Sultan, thank you so much. Thank for you. Your thank you very much. Thank you so much.